Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to, uh, there's a slight change in my, uh, the t title of my talk. And uh, since we recognize some work we've done previously, had some connection with this level crossing compressive sensing thing, okay? So th this work is about a multi-rate compressive sens uh, sampling approach to effectively identify noise modulated uh, uh, rhythmic signals. Okay, I'll try to give a high level kind of presentation and if you want to know the details or you have data to be worked out and to find uh, the hidden things, uh, we can provide the service, okay, through contract or through consulting. <coughs> Here's the outline of my talk, okay. We're going to introduce the noise modulated rhythmic signals and this kind of signals, uh, you can find them in all works of work, whether it's electrical engineering, medical, financial, or whatever, okay. And uh, then we'll talk about broadband, broadband data, which has information embedded versus information bandwidth, okay. And then sparse and compressive sen sensing component and later we talk about multi-channel. We, we're going to integrate all these subtopics, okay? Multi-channel filter banks for SNR improvement uh, for the compressive sense, uh, sampling based on sub-channel result and the application examples and concrete, concreting remarks will be followed, okay? First, noise modulate uh, rhythmic signals, okay? We are interested in the rhythmic signals with certain harmonic spectrum structures. This kind of signal are typically hidden in noise-like random processes, okay? And they're produced by noise amplitude modulation. So this kind of mechanism is a little bit different from communication system, okay? Maybe you don't intend to transmit, but uh, end up signal get transmitted. Okay, the, the median, the other things produce the uh, uh, modulation. So, and here, the random noise distortion to the signal of interest, which we call the uh, harmonic components, are typically multiplicative, okay, in addition to the additive noise, which we commonly see in communication system. And also, the noise bandwidth, remember noise used to modulate the message, okay, is much larger than the bandwidth of the signal of interest, okay? In that sense, you can think about that as a spectrum system, right? Um, but what's different from that typical communication problem is here, the broadband carrier is not known. You don't know the spreading code, okay? How do you recover the hidden message? So our signal processing analysis goals are to recover rhythmic time domain um, message signals or to identify the spectrum signatures of such hidden signal of interest. We commonly call them uh, demon identification, okay. So the clue is to, we know the signal of interest typically lives in a lower dimensional subspace. And then therefore, we need to ID, identify the uh, signal of interest by identifying the subspace. We can, um, since the bandwidth of si signal of interest is relatively small compared to the unknown random modulating signals. Therefore, we have a gain, uh, kind of edge in terms of utilize this redundancy in the spectrum, okay? Therefore, compressive sense sampling approach can be utilized. Okay, bandwidth perspective. Um, the typically, the data model looks like um, the XT is recorded or whatever data provided to, to us, okay? And it can be formulated in terms of two terms. The first term contains the signal of interest, which is a message, MT, and the CT is the so-called uh, random carrier, broadband, okay? and uh, NT is additive noise. So you can think about it, you have a additive noise and a multiplicative noise to the signal of interest, okay? So we're only interested in the MT, how to get the MT out. And uh, unfortunately, the CT is not known. It depends on uh, uh, real system. Sometimes you have multi-component, okay? So the first term can be expanded into multi-component kind of um, formulation, okay? 
And as I mentioned, the bandwidth issue. So the given data is typically oversampled with respect to the bandwidth of signal of interest. Uh, for us, uh, the data of CD quality is provided, such as sound file, wave file, okay. <clears throat> so how uh, the, our application basically is to discover sounds in the sea, okay? There might be others. You can think about medical, okay? You can think about, um, what else? Uh, other field, okay? So here, the random carrier is unknown, okay? So it's different from traditional communication system. And also, we have a highly time-varying situation, and this kind of time-varying are due to, like, uh, specific to our application, like underwater applications where like traveling ships will have different um, uh, speed or dynamics of motion, okay. So we need to develop a simple and yet quite effective approaches to uh, effective in the way of um, as signal processing speed and complexity comparable to the bandwidth of signal of interest, okay? So simple approach and uh, get the signal out and then make it automatic. We all know human being, like our ears, uh, if properly trained, has amazing capability of recognize these things, okay? But how do we make machine uh, do the job? Okay, that's the, that's the thing we're doing. Okay, so here, our approach is based on the following observations. First, <coughs> digitally resampling, okay? And you can think about, there are many ways of doing digitally resampling, and uh, we call it compressive sam sampling. Can be treated as another periodic modulation process, a spread data spectrum replicas in different frequency, dom in frequency domain, okay? And uh, as long as the effective rate in the compressive sampling stage is comparable to message bandwidth, message is signal of interest, then spectral structure of signal can be preserved, the one we are interested. The ones which introduce additive, multiplicative noise, we're not interested in, right? So we, we can just folding them around, whatever. So that's typically called the noise folding, okay? The side effect of doing this is the noise folding effect is going to reduce the SNR. Therefore, simple compressive sensing approach is very sensitive to the operating condition. Then we, um, the, that means decrease of SNR of each subsystems. However, we can use a multi-rate filter banks, okay, and construct a parallel branches of the compressive sen sensing, and also we, can do diversity combining, other sort of combining of multi-channel processing and to compensate such SNR loss, okay? How much you fold it and uh, you get SNR loss because um, the, the ambient noise level goes up and you can also do the combining to, to compensate, okay, this kind of effect. Let me show you some result, okay? And this is a real acoustic data, okay, and uh, recorded. Uh, with CD quality. So the top uh, figure is a temporal domain wave. You can uh, record it for a couple of seconds, 60 seconds, or 90 seconds, right? So the, the middle one is typical so-called spectral analysis. I forgot to put the um, histogram, or uh, the, the histogram or short-term short Fourier analysis approach. People typically use in speech signal analysis, okay? But you see the global ones, okay, so-called uh, acoustic signal spectrum, you can hardly see the structure, the hidden message there, okay? And the bottom one is what we were able to recover. It's called the demon spectrum, okay? So you can see two hertz, four hertz, six hertz, it's harmonics related, so. You see this in some music signals, some music instrumentation. So by identifying the spectrum, you can tell uh, this is produced by different kind of instruments, okay? So this is a more um, wide spectrum. So you can see um, the top is a full spectrum, the bottom is demon spectrum, okay? You can see the harmonic structures, okay? That's the spectrum domain signature. And then, Let's look at the, um, 
the sub-channel processing, also called the filter banks, okay? So for our application, uh, we can choose to use uh, less number channels, less number filter banks, or more, okay? And uh, also depends on how the speed of processing, okay? We want to get that daemon out quickly using low cost um, DSPs, okay? You can see the frequency. So basically, you can see the magenta one is the top one. We only use like a, uh, uh, 90, uh, uh, around 100, okay, subbands, okay, of so-called virtual channel we produced in terms of framing, different frame, different window, different approaches, okay. Produce a virtual frame, which uh, performs like a multi-channel data. Okay, if we increase, uh, if you look at another band from 50 to, uh, 51 to 100, so it's increasing more, 150 channels, then performance goes up, okay. Uh, this is a power spectrum, basically. And you can see we increasing furthermore, or we, on top, we including every channel we could have, okay. Then you see the demon spectrum comes out nicely. That's the spectrum domain. In the tampon domain, we have, uh, <coughs> we can simulate data. You are simply using MATLAB or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you simulate the MATLAB data, and uh, red one is real data, and uh, green one is the, the so-called um, true daemon. And uh, we can simply uh, identify that daemon using the, now we are recovering tempo things. So we, we go back to the frequency domain to figure out, okay, where to do the level crossing, where to put the threshold, uh, how to identify subspace, and we recover the, the demon, okay, which are the blue ones. And depends on how fast you're processing. So this one, the top one, we use a 70 hertz kind of DSP, like a sampling rate or frame rate, okay. The bottom one, we reduce the rate by 50%. Of course, if you go lower, your performance will suffer. Okay, you go higher, you get very accurate result. So uh, pretty much based on complexity, how much you want, can afford. Okay. So finally, concluding, conclusion, okay. Basically, the bandwidth, okay, so-called message bandwidth or information bandwidth versus data acquisition rate plays the essential role in compressive sensing based signal processing. And for the recovery of low rate rhythmic signal of interest hitting the broadband data, subspace identification, multi-rate signal processing based on compressive sensing approach provide a simple yet effective solution, okay? And SNR loss usually is a typical um, disadvantage of compressive sensing and uh, which is due to noise folding can be compensated using the so-called virtual multi-channel or multi-frame so-called filter bank idea by combining the sub-channel result. Okay, so that's it. Thanks. Yeah.